ਇਰੀਜ਼ਨ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਬੈਠੇ ਤੇ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਜੋ ਨਜ਼ਾਰਾ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ Yes. Mm-hmm. 
strong focus on adding gaming IPs and teams to our platform. I understand that many of you may have questions regarding the recent regulatory and tax announcements concerning the online skill-based money gaming sector in India. As stated since the IPO, we have chosen to practice prudence and await further clarity in this area before spending. This approach has been proven to be beneficial for us, especially during the current turbulent situation that is Now, with clarity starting to emerge, we may be a short to Nazara to seize in the coming days, especially as the business models including our currently segment resets and aligns with the new uh, policies and regulatory framework. We simply monitor the developments and remain prepared to take action accordingly. Feel free to ask me more detailed questions during the Q&A around this topic. Finally, as you know, we have uh, also taken an explicit resolution from our board uh, and now seek the shareholder approval for fundraise of the two INR certificate crores. We intend to raise, raise these funds at an appropriate time and with the portion of the competition system. I would now like to hand over the call to Anupriya, head of our corporate development, to give some updates of our performance in this quarter. Thank you very much, and over to you, Anupriya. Thank you, Nitesh. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'll cover the segmental performance of Nitesh. Uh, starting with our gaming segment, which includes gamified early learning, real money gaming, premium, and telco sub segments. This sector contributed to 43% of revenue and grew by 24% year-on-year -year in the first quarter. The margin for this business is the robust 24.6%. If you move to Zidopia, the revenue uh, grew by 10% year-on-year -year for the Zidopia business, while EBITDA increased to 16.1 crores from 9.7 crores in Q1 F23, resulting in an EBITDA margin increase from 18.4% to 28% in Q1 FY24. During the quarter, there was a technical issue with our attribution partner, which temporarily disrupted our marketing campaign and led to higher cost of user acquisition. However, the issue has now been resolved and we expect normalized that and marketing trends going forward. Moving on to the Animal Jam, which we acquired in August 2022. Since acquisition, we have worked on multiple things. Uh, first and foremost, improving the analytics backend to get actionable insights as well as improved cadence for content updates. In addition, we have optimized the non core cost, which has led to improvements in SRA margin from 11.6% in Q4 FY23 to 22.5% in Q1 FY24. Data work has been worked with Animal Jam for driving and optimizing the user acquisition trends. In the next phase of growth, we are looking to further scale up the user acquisition trends while maintaining profitability. Moving to work with your transition, we are working on revamping the franchise. Christopher Sanson has who joined WCC as the CEO, has over 12 years of experience in game design and studio leadership for Glued, EA among others. He is working on several product and growth initiatives to set the stage for growth in the coming quarters. Moving to open play, Q1 FR24 revenues and EBITDA from Classic Run what INR 11.2 crores and INR 0.2 crores of EBITDA respectively. As we are aware, Tamil Nadu banned all real money games, which included skill-based real money games like Rami in April 2023. Tamil Nadu contributed to 20% of revenues and active player base in FY23, and poor FY23 performance saw an impact due to the scale. Reiterating, our R&D business contributed to 4.7% of revenue and 0.5% of EBITDA in Q1 FY24. Nazara's pragmatic approach and limited exposure to this segment have minimized impact to our consolidated financial performance. To the extent required, as Nitish mentioned, the company will proactively take steps to mitigate any further impact. Coming to our East Coast segment, which contributed to 46% of our total revenue and grew by 15% year on year. Uh, looking at Man Nordwin, Nordwin reported revenues of 68.6 crores with an EBITDA of negative 3.8 crores in Q1 FY24. Key IPs were referred to Q2 FY24 to take advantage of market opportunity of a key mobile game coming back. The revenue from this IP will reflect in upcoming quarters, including Q2 FY24. In line with the previous year's established IPs are currently planned in H2. 
Norman continued to scale newer IPs in this quarter, which is still in the investment phase. This, along with increased marketing and brand spend in the gaming accessories business, ahead of the upcoming festive season, had a short-term impact on Q1 FY24. For FY24, we expect Norman to achieve healthy growth that way overall profit. Going to sports era, this reported revenues of INR 46 crores or 52 percent year-on-year growth, and in a bit of INR 16 crores or 55 percent year-on-year growth in Q1 FY24. Sports era is among the top 10 multi-sport destination in the US and ranks number two among the sports websites in India. The company caters to over 80 million monthly active users across market. We have the business which was acquired by Sports Leader in 2023 has been integrated well and is geared up for the upcoming NFL season. Our asset business acquired in April 2022. Over the last year, we have been focusing on higher margin business and simultaneously expanding our client base to minimize dependency on the customer. This has resulted in overall gross margin improvement from 18.4% in Q1 FY23 to 22.9% in Q1 FY24. There was a revenue degrowth of 16% in Q1 FY24 due to loss of a one large, however low margin contributing client. With strong emphasis on high margin and diversified client base, we expect revenue and EBITDA growth to pick up from Sushi on. With this, I have closed my remarks here and we would like to open the call for Q&A. I would request that you should be in the Shah to join me for the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the session and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star in one of the question telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star in two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question is resolved. Participants, you must press star in one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Mr. Jane from Fairview Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good morning. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, first one is regarding Animal Jam. So uh, can you uh, provide the numbers on uh, what has been the revenue growth uh, year on year in this business? Because uh, I can prove that the revenues have stayed flat. And the next question is regarding Ethiopia. Uh, so uh, would it be possible to elaborate on uh, the issue faced uh, when Ethiopia business this quarter and how it impacted uh, subscriber growth? And uh, the follow-up to that is uh, what kind of subscriber growth we can see uh, in Q2 and Q3? And uh, would the margins come back to the last year's three quarter level? Thank you. Nitin, hi, this is uh, Nitish. So, for Animal GM, uh, we did not consolidate as news in uh, Q1 of FY23, which is why we have not given the comparison with that. However, if I were to focus on what's happening on Animal GM, uh, as we have also updated in the presentation, there's been a lot of brilliant work uh, that has gone in the last two months since we acquired the company to enhance our insights into the future, as well as improve monetization features of the game so that our LP CAC services increase significantly. Uh, on the second end, uh, we have been working very closely with the data work team to optimize the user activation. I think we have mentioned uh, quite some details in the presentation on how we are doing that and you know the benefits we are just starting to see. In the meanwhile, what we have done for shortly is focus both on the cost side of operations of this uh, business as well as uh, you know optimize uh, our margins. We would have seen that even uh, sequentially you know our margins uh, our extra margins have increased uh, from 11.6% to 32.6% in this quarter and I think we should be able to at least extend this uh, margins going forward but we start ramping up our user acquisition and going to overall revenue. That's on Animal Jam. On Ethiopia, we uh, basically had an issue with uh, Google had platform. There were certain changes and that caused a temporary uh, interruption in our ability to 
spend it uh, that uh, got resolved in early June and I think uh, we will normalize uh, uh, the spends as well as the uh, you know the CPC or the tax that we track uh, is coming to us. Uh, I think on the future that we can do so. We believe that uh, with this normalizing, you will have to see a subscriber growth happening in the coming quarters. And we are also experimenting now with you know, the monetization methods which are to increase our overall output. I hope that answers the question. So, I'll take the follow up questions you may have. Yeah, just the follow up on the margins. Uh, if we go to our uh, usual quarterly spends, uh, where do we see the margin going back to? I think, I think Nokia is uh, today we should, you know, look at a 20, 20 to 23% of the margin range. Because we uh, see a lot of uh, balanced margins along with growth. So, if we do get, uh, you know, go to quarterly, we scale up that uh, cost that we are more you know, comfortable with. Definitely priority growth as well. So I think uh, 20 to 50% on a study page is what we should look at. Perfect. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Next question is from the line of Rohan Nagpal from Helios Capital Management. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for sharing with me. A couple of questions. Um, one, you, uh, there is there have been uh, there have been a number of acquisitions uh, that have taken place over the last year. So, would it be possible to break out um, the growth numbers for gaming and esports on a like for like or organic basis? Um, and the second question was on Ethiopia. Um, your subscribers numbers have been more or less flat. Um, so, are you seeing some sort of are you seeing like a not true or a high photo in terms of subscriber rate or um, do you think you think there is possibility to expand this further? Um so yeah, this is the question for that. Thank you. Hi, so uh, on each one this uh, you know we are seeing a steady thirty to thirty five percent organic growth uh, you know on a on a basis, and I think we will continue to maintain that. Because, you know, many of our is maturing. Uh, we will continue to see that. In addition to that, any M&A activity that we do, we do that uh, business. And uh, as you also know, not the gaming that has recently you know, closed around the country of about 58 US dollars, US dollars uh, for existing investors as well as a Sony Corporation. And uh, you can expect more MA activity on that front. On the gaming side, the only question uh, that was not there in the previous quarter was uh, sorry, the year on year quarter Q1 FFTP was a uh, challenge gap, uh, which is a result of winning uh, for us at this point. Uh, your second question, unfortunately, uh, can you just summarize the question for me, please? Yeah, I was saying um, on Ethiopia, uh, you seem to have hit a sort of wall in terms of subscriber growth. Um, it's the state that 300,000, 310,000 number for a while. Um, so, are you seeing market saturation, or are you uh, do you see scope for sort of taking through that into a slightly higher level? Yeah, no, sure, of course. So, just to give you the perspective, right? So over the last many quarters, obviously, we had. Uh, the plateau and actually even declined into uh, that uh, DFA issue. But uh, we took uh, this step. One was uh, doing price increases uh, and also getting uh, LTV tax that we were comfortable with, much more and acquiring more users. Q3 and Q4 of uh, FY23 were actually saw increase in subscriber rate after a plateau for a long time. So we saw 10% growth in Q3 and uh, one percent we were expecting that momentum to continue and start growing. Uh, however, like we mentioned, Q1 expected to draw additional interruption, uh, which sort of uh, held it, but we expected growth to continue. I don't think we are anywhere close to market saturation. It is a uh, much larger opportunity here in Ethiopia. It has been very pinned on, I would say, the LGB crack equation that we want to maintain. And uh, that said, we are working on how can we scale this, uh, you know, much higher. Uh, 
Regarding the Nordwin, uh, is there any market improvements in the upcoming quarter for this financial year? So two things. One is uh, this quarter, uh, you know, you saw actually a bit of loss for two reasons. One is we consciously took for one key launch of our because of the uh, GMI coming back, we would see much more action. Uh, and we've announced a large event, uh, the GMS, when we have partnered with our sports, we are going to be broadcasting it live from August 1st, 4th onwards, and uh, a few years and a couple of years. That's the second thing that we will do. The second thing in uh, Q1 was to be, you know, spend successively on branding uh, marketing activities around the gaming activities and business things. Q2 and Q3 are the main peak season for them because of the money, etc. And uh, we're kind of preparing for that. So you will definitely see uh, the margins improve in Q2, Q3, Q4 as revenues grow. You will also see, uh, again, assure that you know, our objective of running all our businesses in a profitable continues and not in will be profitable for the entire employee report. So Q1 is a lot of representatives what will happen in the entire year. I think for uh, overall perspective, our objective is to still is to press the accelerator on strategic growth, creating more, creating an ecosystem. We are not uh, gunning for very high margin expansion for FY24. I think FY25 onwards is still working on that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and uh, one more thing regarding the sports, uh, so we have good growth and uh, um, good events are lined up in the next uh, coming quarters. So most kind of growth we are expecting in coming quarters and uh, on the line of uh, three years, what uh, was uh, growth potential in sports speed, uh, um, and margins uh, in production. Yeah. So I don't have any specific uh, numbers to share at this point of time. However, uh, like I mentioned in my opening remarks as well, we believe that uh, the next years will be very good for sports era and they should be able to see growth. Also, it's important to note that we had sports era had acquired football network in the US. Uh, Q1 is a option for football network. It starts picking up from mid of Q2 and uh, the peak season of Q3 Q4. I think uh, that along with uh, the big world cup. I think for me, the bigger picture is the team that has done a fantastic, uh, you know, execution up to this point. But for expansion, I think sports media could be a great platform to roll up many other similar properties that we have done in KFN. So we are really excited to see how the integration with KFN and performance of KFN after sports media, you know, interesting or so much of it is taken out. That will kind of open up many more opportunities for us going forward and for Thank you. And lastly, on the third year, Martin, I mean, the margin will continue to the next year also, this quarter and next quarter of the Is there any possibility to see any design margin? No, I have a free name. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and on the premium side, um, uh, the revenue yeah, margins are very good. Uh, but, uh, is there any revenues that are a little bit uh, consistent over the last four years? Mm, yes. So, is there any possibility to do, uh, see any uptick in these revenues? Uh? So, in Philippe, I would say 28% margin that you are seeing in uh, this uh, current quarter of the 
directly subject to two lower strands, right? And therefore, I would, uh, you know, factor in normalizing of the margins that we have seen from our more users. So, uh, if the answer earlier is 2%, it is the margin range we should be, you know, looking at for the entire year. I mean, for the premium business, at least is the own high quality gaming IP, uh, like we have already, Utopia, Animal Jam, World Future, Asia. There is a lot of uh, potential in the IP that we have unlocked. Today we are just uh, monetizing from this, uh, you know, ways like black purchases, advertising, and subscription, but many more opportunities can be unlocked with the monetizing over a period of time. So our focus is to make sure that we are you know, building and acquiring very high quality IP that can be built over a period of time. Gaming business in general should remain a high margin, plus, uh, you know, sustainable, sustainable business, uh, and that's what we are very excited about. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Now the best for your future quarter, sir. Thank you. Our second name of this is one to ask the question. This question is on the line of Janesh Joshi. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question on the uh, GMI master key. Uh, can you share from what some I'm sorry, we are losing your audio in between. Is this better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question is, uh, for what some have told the excellent API for uh, GMI master key too, and will this IP pop uh, for us? And uh, a follow up to this that uh, apart from uh, BGMI, which uh, other game has a uh, kind of uh, strong tension uh, from a viewership standpoint? And are we organizing any around the year future? Yeah, so, uh, as far as the BGMS team is concerned, the three season team uh, will start. We are in season two right now. From the digital, we have consistent uh, for one season uh, with the OTT player. The BGM is uh, uh, already a profitable IP for us. So you will also see it being profitable for us in Q2. Uh, we got a fantastic uh, response in uh, season one that we did this last year. And we expect uh, to see a much better uh, response. Uh, this uh, current, uh, current season that starts on September. Second question to you, please uh, just uh, repeat it. Any, any other game apart from GMI uh, has uh, this kind of fandom and planning for organizing this Yeah, I mean, we've done a lot of work around Valorant and we are starting to see that uh, build up. Of course, uh, BGMI is extremely popular in India. Uh, there are, you know, the game that we are also expecting either to come back or become you know more popular going forward. So we are doing a lot of work around Valorant, for example, in South Asia and the whole series. So the game that is uh, going to be released that looks uh, promising is called Dustin 2. So we will also wait and see how that comes. Uh, sure. Uh, I have a question with Argo of Ethiopia. So if I remember correctly, uh, one in June uh, last year, and then there was another one in the month of uh, December as well. So I understand that the benefit of a price size will be still over a period of time. As the new subscribers come in at a price size and the old ones get to uh, uh, out. However, if you look at our system over the last uh, 45 quarters, it has been a significant increase in the time of about uh, 27 to
Now we have set up the our building and continuing in the current process. Uh, does that answer the question?
I think the other other segment that you were definitely looking at doing a lot more capital allocation was in the energy sector. Uh, this uh, current turbulence uh, obviously has made us pause till things become much more clearer. But I have a feeling that this may actually pop you know, many opportunities that Nazara has been waiting for on the sidelines for a long time. I think the next uh, few months uh, are going to be very interesting we need to observe very closely the lottery in terms of the stakeholders, you know, in the ecosystem. And uh, whether organic or inorganic, so once clarity has been fully achieved, uh, I think it will be a large potential uh, for us to stay there too. Yeah, in fact, uh, so just to follow up here, um, I think I agree uh, that we can throw up a lot of, uh, lot of opportunities. Um, um, just maybe, uh, uh, you know, if, if things remain status quo, uh, just, your, just your view on, uh, you know, how the, uh, the industry can adjust itself. Do you think, uh, you know, with status quo uh, staying, uh, industry can actually withstand this? Uh, and survive and, and only, uh, you know, a stronger players can stay and therefore we will have significant opportunities. Just your initial view, I know this is still very, very early days, but what are your thoughts? So, so do you know, firstly, unfortunately, there is an unclarity of, of what is this quote today. But I think that will be very clear as we in the next uh, meeting announcement. So I think we are not very far away from that. But assuming an impact of uh, the banks, right? I think uh, clearly this is going to impact a uh, lot of the small players or the smaller players uh, and they will therefore have to consolidate if they have a chance to survive. That would be one opportunity. The larger players will also have to relook at the way they operate, the economics. Uh, some will try and absorb uh, some of the tax impacts on behalf of uh, you know, the consumers. So their short term profitability may get uh, you know, hurt in the next year or two. And they are going to uh, you know, uh, bounce back from this. But once they have stabilized it, I think uh, the clarity will really help uh, help uh, set, set a path to growth, which could be, you know, uh, I would say a better multiple, right? It could grow significantly over a three to five year segment. So I think that's what we are going to look at. And how do we now, you know, we've always been on the sideline saying we want regulation strategy and flexibility. That is almost here. How does Nagara navigate, you know, grow a large, scalable uh, and sizable business here? Sure. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. It was to all the participants receiving two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Mukundar from Mozilla Nostal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Nilitis, good morning. Uh, first, uh, on this, uh, you know, if we look at uh, your investments over the last two years, you guys have touched quite aggressively into the U.S. market, uh, but unfortunately, uh, because of, you know, one or other reason, uh, you know, a lot of uh, U.S. properties are, uh, you know, right now without growth, uh, most recent being uh, Animal Jam, which I uh, think come down in terms of top and from about 30 crore, uh, you know, earlier. Uh, what is, you know, your uh, kind of perception of uh, the opportunity uh, and focus which we have? Uh, you guys have, you know, done a fairly handsome job of managing profitability there, uh, the lack of growth, but, uh, you know, where do you think, uh, you know, you would like to focus more in the agenda, more on the growth side? which uh, clearly is more visible in the Indian market? Or uh, do you think uh, lack of monetization limits uh, your opportunity here and hence uh, you will keep on kind of pushing more on the developed markets where profitability can be uh, relatively uh, more achievable? Sure. Uh, good question. Good question uh, so I think for us, always getting the fundamentals of the business in place is very important because we rush into scaling things. Just let's take Wildworks uh, as an example. I think spending the last six, seven months uh, getting a lot of discipline and tools in place was very important for us because we don't like to press the accelerator if uh, we don't have clear visibility 
scenario after the you know the uh, obviously in the you know, government you know second that uh, you know we might be you know kind of uh, on the exit of the consolidation in some scenario or uh, you know do you think uh, there is only one way of us uh, being a buyer out there? Uh, when you say when you say exit uh, scenario what do you mean uh, we kind of exit the real money gaming market, uh, you know, given the adverse, uh, you know, kind of investment dynamics. Yeah. So at this point of time, we don't have a way to exit the business. Like I said, we are actually looking at it as a glass full of property. And having a positive view on how can we build a business here, given, uh, given what it is. But depending on how general clarity comes in, obviously if there is if there is you know a policy that may be seen to be business unwise, then we will make a prudent call as required. Understood. Uh, thank you very much, question. I'll get back in Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of okay for my friend here securities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, hi, sir. Uh, so, uh, on the Ethiopia front, uh, so exactly what happened uh, which boosted margin uh, so much in this quarter? Uh, I, I understand that there was some full time that the market expects uh, because of the issues that came up. But uh, uh, there, there must have been some other uh, changes also. I mean, changes to the fixed cost model, which will be retained going ahead. So, give us some clarity on that. Yeah, sure. Do you want to take this? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it's uh, essentially two things. I think the bigger impact is actually um, how the market things can cycle back. As I said, we had a small issue. Uh, if you look at the cost of the Ethiopia uh, acquisition, is a big cost item. Uh, so, it also makes a significant dent uh, on the. As I said earlier, I do want to. Uh, and, and, as of early June, we're going back to normal and terms of back to normal. So, uh, that's more of the problem. The second thing is uh, we are experimenting with a few other uh, revenue sources apart from just the traditional US uh, uh, subscription model. One, we're getting through that in the That's still in the experiment stage. Understood. Yeah, this is just hard. Just look uh, Anupya here. So one is, uh, if you look at the marketing spend, right, uh, the digital marketing spend, if you look from this quarter versus the same quarter last year, they look similar. However, we were also experimenting more on the branding side at that point. 
which has incremental cost, which is not reflected in the KPI sheet in particular. Right? So that's the reason we're seeing a slightly lower margin on in Q1 FY22 when we compare to Q1 FY22 in spite of the same performance market. Understood. That, that makes it much more clearer. So, uh, on the branding front, uh, so uh, Nitish just mentioned that it's great that you know bringing those uh, assets to India also, right? So, uh, what would be the real investments that go into you know adapting such a different market product towards India? Uh, I wish there's not much. Uh, I mean, the locals already uh, you know. Popular in India in terms of user base. It's just that it doesn't uh, LTV capital add up very well for us. We don't spend a lot of money marketing. So I think there will be not much localization required from an India perspective in terms of the product itself. It's going to be more around product typing, monetization, uh, models. Do you do it more subscription or do you do it more ad monetized and monetized? Those are the areas that we need to really work on rather than trying to localize the product for India, whether it's Animal Jam or uh, Zerokia. Understood. So, uh, going ahead, what kind of subscription, uh, subscriber additions should one be building in for Zerokia? Uh, we don't have a specific uh, guidance on that. Uh, hmm. I think uh, we will look at incremental growth at this point of time, but we are actively seeking at how we will go in a broad range that we are getting. Mm -hmm. or we kind of break out uh, to 400,000 users, subscribers, is mm -hmm. something that we're still working on. Until then, I think you will see uh, incremental growth. Okay, fair enough. Uh, now, just one more question on the uh, new uh, uh, the, uh, celebrity endorsement which you did. Uh, I think it was with Cricket or Shubman Markel uh, for eSports. Uh, now, I understand that Shuman Gill is, is uh, pretty popular, but I did not really uh, understand what is his connection with esports. So, if you could just stop clarifying on the short Sure. So, he's specifically, uh, I mean, as a brand, as an ambassador for our gaming accessories business, uh, which is uh, things. Uh, it's an overlap between, I would say, youth like him. And uh, Roman is also very active gamer himself. So I think a lot of the communication is going to be around that. Uh, encouraging him and his passion in gaming into the uh, gaming Got it. So, I mean, is, is my understanding correct that you are trying to reach out an audience slightly uh, larger than the hardcore gamers? Yes, uh, I can see them also. Thank you. This question is from the line of Rohan Nagpur from Headless Capital Management. Please come in. Thanks for the follow up. Um, uh, continuing with the theme of trying to understand the metrics of the business, I want to go back to the, uh, what you said about the 30 percent in organic growth. Um, so if I look at Q1 FY23, uh, based on your presentation, if I add up all of the units that are in, in gaming today, uh, that adds up about 40% of the revenue. So gaming in Q1 FY23 generated 89 crores um, in revenue. If I look at gaming in FY in Q1 FY24, and I net out 20 crores from Animal Jam, it is an 87.5. So, is it fair to say on an organic basis that revenue is actually shrunk? So, two things, right? One is uh, the total 26 percent growth uh, that we spoke about uh, was a surprise I was a little bit of sports business. Uh, the question of the e-sports business. I think largely, if you look at gaming IT, right? You have Europia, you have uh, the World Cup Championship. You have a uh, uh, business, real money gaming business, which is a uh, plastic company, and you have uh, well works now, right? These are uh, the Adamant Jam business. So, Kidopia has grown 10 percent year on year. Uh, WCK has been plastic flat at this point of time. And uh, the negative impact you are seeing is uh, on the RMG business, uh, because the plastic company business is projecting Q1. Due to uh, the Tamil Nadu, the product, the product you have 
you have uh, you know uh, almost talking about 20 percent of revenues that uh, actually we should sell in our game. You saw short drop board. So I think uh, that's courage to some the business. Uh, so you're right. It's kind of flattish so on a, a complaint basis. But we are quite hopeful with the work we're doing. We will start growing the businesses. And uh, speaking of and, and uh, the reason also the aggregation on uh, on uh, sports media as well uh, was because in Q4 FY23 uh, I think the revenue number was 38.7. This quarter, once you've included um, your the football network, you have to grow. Uh, that number is 46. So how much? What is what? What the numbers look like on an organic basis over here? I don't have a big at this point of time, but uh, just to get the right perspective, I think much of the growth has come organically in uh, Q1 from sports data, because you also had IPL in Q1 uh, place. Uh, this is actually the lowest uh, uh, the lowest season for football network. There is no uh, con there is no contribution and no zero effort contribution uh, for football network in uh, Q1. Chip, let me just add, uh, so it's a little I'm a, I think it's a uh, question. If you want to a single sport on the side, it's only on baseball uh, uh, or, or what you want to have called that game. Like that one. In a sense, the season is going to be a month jam every year. Um, so this quarter is each kind of out of season for them. So this season actually had a marginal maybe loss on it for them. And, and, uh, so this is primarily organic growth driven by IPL or traffic? But the thing is, if you look at Sports Kira as well, more than half the revenue now comes from the US. So it definitely is a factor, but uh, they have grown on a US sports quite uh, significantly. Can you just provide some color on like where that growth is coming from in the US? Yeah. Because it is a sizable jump, right? Uh, yeah. Even from even on quarterly basis. Let me answer that. Uh, so, just to uh, so pick it up, I share some data. So, football network is about 2.5 crores of revenue out of this 45 crores that we have in Q1, as if the contribution was fairly limited. Uh, growth has come from, I think, uh, one is our US. Uh, Revenue, the revenue, the CPM that has grown significantly. The monthly attribute of it has grown. Plus, uh, we have six cents uh, that have also grown. Uh, so I think these are the uh, these are key contributors to the revenue in this quarter. Got it. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Nathan Jain from Fairview Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to talk about the employee expenses. So, there has uh, been a jump of around 60% uh, over last year. So, is there any one-off here? Uh, like, if you can tell us. I think one, one is the valid, uh, you know, uh, many more teams. For example, you have uh, you can have football teams uh, come in, and also you have uh, uh, some uh, some small one-off expenses. I think in the year, but they would not uh, overall. So I think overall team addition and also wild works because the wild works team is in the US. Uh, so that entire team has also been added. I think about 50 people. Uh, those are the new additions to increase the size. Okay, and like, do we see this trend going forward as well? Uh, in terms of cost increase? Yeah, uh, employee expense cost increase. I mean, if you were to acquire two businesses that come in with a new team, uh, then obviously those costs will be added up. Organically, we don't expect uh, uh, the team cost increase much. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, just on the margins again, uh, so the... Uh, at the end of Q4, uh, you know, the commentary was uh, more uh, in the direction of, you know, margins improving this year for the overall business. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the three verticals, uh, other than gaming, uh, the other two verticals, esports and 
they have seen uh, a different, uh, you know, the margin decline. So, uh, how do we see uh, the profitability for the rest of the year? We are aiming for a margin that would be higher than uh, the for sure for a discount is on a blended basis. Uh, again, I don't have a specific idea at this point of time, but we expect the uh, uh, overall margins to be better than the year. To be better than uh, FY23. Yeah. Okay, and the last one is uh, on the recent regulation change on uh, GST announcement. So, uh, do we also see an impact on esports because there is a profit pool involved there too? So, if you could clarify. No, oh, there is no impact whatsoever on esports. Uh, esports because there is no uh, majoring or there is no money in time uh, for humans or players. Uh, it's a taxation policy specifically for where money is put in to win money. Okay, okay. So no impact on esports whatsoever. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. We'll take the last question from the line of Rahul Jain from Solar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just to understand uh, what can happen uh, in this place, uh, in this quarter from a uh, northern business point of view, and uh, how much of that is also pertaining to this uh, plan lift that happened on the GMI during the quarter. And how, from a 12 month and beyond perspective, you see this business can change, uh, provided the status quo remain in terms of uh, GMI uh, continuing as a game in India. So, in this quarter, uh, uh, Rahul, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we have uh, we had two key launches like the GMI, which was referring to one of FI 23, which we kind of pushed into Q2. subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another update. Please like, share and